some girls just want to watch World Cup. Jeff Nails another draft day. Nail this top five has 98. I got some just loves and some Kevin James. Fucking Kevin James. It's the history of bad. It's bad. It's the history of bad. It's so bad. It's the history of bad ideas. It's the history of bad. Oh, yeah. It's the history of bad. This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Hello Jeff. Save 20% off your first meal box with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the history of bad ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 460. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Blake. I'm Jim. And I'm Brian. Cabin Boy. And I'm Scab... Nobody. No scabs this no, week. No scab today. Scab Randall? Scab Canadian. No, she's at home. Oh. Scab Gimp? Ooh. Okay. All right. Scab Gimp is here. Mm-hmm. Welcome. Blake, you're welcome to come in here. You're part of the show. You're allowed to come over here. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> uh, we got six people in the booth this week in the uh, room here. The booth, ma- the booth made for three. Ah! You know what? If we had ten more inches in this studio, it would have been more comfortable, I That's think. That's what she said. Ah! <laughs> My wife actually did say that. No, anyways. Um, anyways, it is Expo Week. Yay! Woo! Yay! Yay. Cincinnati Comic Expo, September 23rd through 25th. Hey, that's this week, Jim. What, what, what are you doing this weekend? Well, I guess I'm going to be at the Expo. You know what? I'm just going to just going chill out this weekend. I don't think I feel like doing anything to you. I might hit the pool. Okay. Yeah. Like billiards or like swimming pool? Both. Oh, okay. Okay. At the same time. Oh, I've seen that. That's fancy. I ruined so much felt. <laughs> uh, no, Duke Energy Convention Center this uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come on down. We'll be on the second floor. Uh, Cinema Guys is going to be joining us, and uh, it's going to be a fun time. So uh, I am moderating the Logan Kim from Ghostbusters Afterlife, uh, the Christopher Lloyd Back to the Future uh, panel. Uh, the is it a Back to the Future panel? Yes. No. Specifically? No, no, I guess it's not. Oh, okay. It's just Christopher Lloyd panel, I okay. guess. Woo! <laughs> because, I mean... I got some clue questions. It's a clue, it's a clue panel. Taxi and ta- I do have a taxi question, too. I wonder about Roger Rabbit. <sighs> got to put one of them in. I have one of those in. Do you uh, think he knows who framed him? Nope. No. Because he died in it. Spoilers. Sorry. My bad. Great. My bad. Thanks a lot. And then uh, we'll Don't be to watch that movie now. Tom Arnold on Sunday from Roseanne and, and, and True Lies. And Impact Wrestling. Was he an Impact Wrestling? Oh, that's right. That's an right. International Man of Mystery. Inter- Austin Powers, that's you, right. You don't have any wrestling questions for him? I do not. Wasn't he at WrestleMania one year, too? I think he was. I do have Best Damn Sports Show question. Uh, is, and then, is it Chris Rose is a dick, isn't he? Is I that, like Chris is that, Rose. Is that, what, is that what it's going to be? That's no. Cool. Oh. Uh, and then I have, uh, I'm doing the uh, John Noble uh, panel at 3 o'clock on Sunday. So come on down. Justin's got uh, five or six of them. Brad's got five or six of them. Uh, or he's got five, I think. Um, so, yeah, come on down. And The uh, rest of us have none. Uh, so they have two to your one. Yeah, I got four. <laughs> and they got, Brad's got five. Justin's got six. Justin, uh, originally Justin wasn't going to do one of them, and then they're like, because he's like, oh, I just have to do the intro, and then it got changed up, and they're like, we need you to do the moderate, it'd be a moderator. He's like, I'm in, I'm fine. So, you know how Justin is. Can, can I just put out this PSA yeah. for, for people? Yes. William Shatner is going to be there. Yes. All we're going to do is talk horses. Do not muddy the waters <laughs> with Star Trek talk. We don't need to hear about it. He's got a farm in Kentucky. He raises horses. That's all we want to talk about. How many horses he got? I don't know. What about the new one that was just born this week? That's your question. How many horses? Do we need our my horse to come in so he can do, put on a, a you know a show? Your horse is injured every other week. No, 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 no. Just saw the chiropractor yesterday. Looking good. Do you own that horse or do you? I own it. You own the horse. I own the horse. Own the horse. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's okay. Cool. Um, is it cool? Because I don't know if Doug really appreciates I, I, that. I, I know people that <laughs> lease horses. People that own horses. <laughs> 
You know, it helps so, with yeah, your talk. So, so nobody listening can actually <laughs> hear these. They actually lease, you know, like barn space. Uh-huh. And all that kind Still of can't stuff. hear. So it's different. Yeah. So Blake knows people that lease horses and barns. <laughs> Blake, do you have a question? Do you have two questions over there? <laughs> Uh, question no. in seven parts. It's a seven-part question. Uh, we would not probably be talking horses. I don't know. Brad's doing the Shatner one. He's doing Shatner and Dreyfus. Take a question. Shatner is Isn't Shatner just an intro? It's it, just an intro. Yes. He was going to speak. There's no... Yeah, I think there's a lot of... But yeah. Yeah. you uh, should ask Shatner about horses <coughs> in Kentucky because he's in Cincinnati. He is in Cincinnati. We may ask him about those Shatner horses. Mm-hmm. Not in Kentucky. Would um, people just get a light? Yeah. <laughs> I just I watched that one because you posted it of the Saturday Night Live skit and it like they're showing him the contract on the side. Yeah. Like, no, you got to be here talking about He's this. He's yelling at him and he comes up. Oh, that was just uh, evil, Kurt evil. from <laughs> episode, episode thirty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job, guys. The enemy within. <laughs> I just love John Lovitz in there. <laughs> Have you ever even kissed a girl? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So come on down. Tickets uh, since I comic expo.com and at the door and uh, opens at two o'clock for VIP three o'clock for uh, uh, general audience on Friday. VIP a great a great deal too. Yes, if, if you buy it, in, I think January or February, it's a fantastic yep. deal. Yep. Well, you uh, can't get it now. No, it's sold you can't. Out. It's sold out. Yes. Uh, VIPs will be able to stay in the audience this year, mm-hmm. except for two panels when you have to switch up the stage. I think. So we'll see. Uh, but everything else is great. So there you go. Um, Jeff is going to be our cameraman this year. Jeff? I'm waving. No one can see you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to point to you during the po- the <coughs> panel and be like, and then you're going to give me the sign to go on. I think that's what uh, it's going to do. I watch the morning show, so okay. I think I know the stuff that they do behind the scenes. All right. I know it all from watching Wayne's World. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Okay. Jim's going to be like the uh, program director. I think that's what it's called. He's going to be in the coat rack room, but given the orders, even though he can't see us. Yeah, I'm going to be like the producer out in the other room. Okay, good call, good call. This is a breaking news story. Come on! Doug's going to be, I think, our head of security. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I would not mess with you. I, brought, I, got, the, I got the cattle prod from the barn yesterday. Oh, good. So good. we're good to go. And okay. I don't think he needs the cattle prod with those hands. No. <laughs> Hell no, man. He'll just back slap to somebody. I'm See my ape hands? That's right. I'm prepared to walk around with one ear, one hand in my ear going, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, to myself going, you get back! You get back <laughs> over there! Blake's going to be security with just a fake... Uh, fake earpiece. A fake yeah. earpiece. Right. And Brian, Dr. Dana's going to be there. Canadian yeah. of the year. Co-Canadian of the year. It's a big thing. Yep. It's a big thing. Yeah. So. And I'll be there too. Oh yeah, yeah, you will too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good job. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the invite. Thanks. You're in charge of escorting, aren't you? Uh, for most of the weekend, I am <laughs> fetching the celebrities. Uh, let's let's clear that up. I mean, not escorting. We are right next to a hotel. Stop it. No, that hotel got torn down. Oh, we're right across the street from, from a hotel. <laughs> That's where we got the beds from. Sorry. <laughs> hey, that hotel next door that got torn down. I'm sure it's going to be finished any day now. That, no, we just drove nice, by. That nice park. Yeah, is that what it is it, now? It's grass. Yep. <laughs> Are they starting a building over there? Nope. Nope. Okay. You know, there's a lot of legal stuff going on, and it will be years before that's cleared up. Let's just say this. If you come to the Cincinnati Comic Expo, wonderful experience. Duke Energy Convention Center, wonderful convention center. The problem is Cincinnati doesn't have, like, a streetcar to get you there uh, to the convention center. They can get you four blocks away. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then you can Uber it <laughs> the rest of the way. Uh, that's the downside. Um, you know, Jim, let's build a streetcar in Cincinnati. What what do you think it should go by? Anything popular? Oh, it needs it needs to go by the Fountain Square area mm-hmm. on either side of it. Yeah. Okay. Twice. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Um, four block, like five blocks away. There's a big convention center. People, co- no, we don't need to put it near that. Well, they need people need to walk. Mm-hmm. We're a fat nation. We need to walk. Well, we got a casino. We got built up on the northeast side of, of town. Can we be six blocks away from that? Actually, only three. Oh, okay. Sorry. So it's closer to the casino than the convention center. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, but come on down, Cincinnati people. Everybody loves Cincinnati. You make it sound so appealing. It is appealing. It's a fun time. The Reds are in town this week. You could get some cheap tickets. Um, I bet you the re- the convention has more fans. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, 
Anyway, so anything going on this week? Doug's here, number one fan. Um, I, I brought I brought something. Uh oh, a big ass Bucky's. I drink. I brought Dream World Zero Sugar Coca Cola. What is that? You'll need to try it. Is it like can, a? Mystery? Can we have the bartender pour the drink? Jim, I, I've never seen him in action. It tastes like dreams. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Or nightmares. It kind of depends. And I, uh, it all depends on what your dreams <laughs> taste like. I also, I also brought Cajun boil. Bucky's chips too. Oh, just a small bag. Cajun but. boiled, boiled could chips. be good. Could be good. Oh, chips okay. Like crawdads. It's yeah, not. Cajun. Jim, I, I we've I already tried it. We boiled. don't. You know, do we need to? You know. Is it, you said those are Susan Boyle chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Dream a little dream. I've already got one of these. Oh, okay. Thank you. Do you guys have all one? Look at that. Look at look at that. Blake already Bar- ate his. Bartender in action. I mean, that is Look at that. It's very nice. Minimal foam. Oh. We also have uh what what kind is this? Um chocolate Oreos? Is that what? The, 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 or, I'm sorry, not chocolate. Uh the Twinkie. Brookie. No, the oh. t- Twinkie, sorry. Chocolate Twinkies? Chocolate Twinkies, Brookie Oreos and Funyun flavored that, that may be next week. No, it's going to be this Funyun one. Funyun chips and Cajun boiled chips. We're going to be off the air for a couple weeks after this. So. Well, we'll still have new episodes. Well, correct. But, but we won't be together. Yeah. And dream, dream. Dream Weaver. Dream, dream World Zero Sugar Coca Cola. We want to be healthy. We want to be healthy. Here. Dream a little dream. I mean, I, I also have a zero sugar soda. So Mountain Dew is probably the healthiest Pass thing it you could around. drink. Okay. So is this like, is every Dream World a different flavor? What do you mean? No. Is every Dream World? Like this is, is the flavor. Dream no. World is Dream the World flavor. Dream World is one. Okay. They had one that was Starlight. Starlight was tastes like. Spirit. Oh God! Oh. <laughs> I didn't know where we were going. So Jason went first. Oh, God! <laughs> the hell is that thing? I had already tried it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're next. <laughs> Woo! Smells like a blueberry bag. Oh, it doesn't smell good. I will say that. I guess I should have done that first. It's on good. <laughs> it's on good. Could be good. Everybody has different tastes. Yeah, some people might love it. Not us. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what is it supposed to taste? Jesus like? has nothing to do with that flavor. Blake, what, I, uh, get your microphone here. It tastes like you can weird, take it out, Doug. You can take the microphone out. Tastes like, like that. A weird diet soda. We still can't hear you, Blake. Not. Can't hear you. Can't hear. You. There you go. Tastes like a weird diet soda, but it's not. It well, tastes like well, it is zero sugar, so that is. It tastes is like flat I, floor cleaner. Oh, <laughs> flat what? Floor cleaner. Oh. I was thinking, I agree, like it tastes like a flat diet Coke of some, or diet drink of some sort. I agree. Uh, okay, now, <clears throat> I'm not sure how many, uh, you'll never know. You're too young. You're youngin', but I thought it tasted like the penicillin we had as a kid. Oh. <laughs> when you mixed it with Coke and you yeah. put the penicillin in. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is this before or after mom would put the hydrogen peroxide in your ears? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Let's not go there. <laughs> if you drank it from the Bucky, Bucky's Yeti, would it taste better? If you drink no, it from the Bucky's. It's not going in there. No. It'll eat through it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, what do you think? I mean, it's not good. <laughs> I'm going to finish it. This is bad. Mainly because I have nothing else to drink mm-hmm. right now, but you have a. Uh, have a, beer. a nice Brewdog Fellowship IPA. Okay, it's warm, and it's an IPA. So that's two strikes against it. It would probably still taste better. Oh, that dream. Whew. That dream is oh, awful. That's a nightmare. God. It is weird. Speaking of nightmares, uh, we got chocolate Twinkies. Uh, do we have the box for this real quick? I just wanted to check one thing here. Oh, they're spooky. Ah, they're spooky oh. Twinkies. Sugar and calories. Uh, two cakes is 270 calories. How much sugar? Uh, scream filling. Sodium is 17%, 390 milligrams. Oh, my God. It's got scream filling. Uh, <laughs> I've seen that movie. I know how it Total is. Total fat, 12%. Cholesterol, 12%. Uh, so, yeah, this is 135 for one of them here. This is so, another thing that we would have for breakfast. Mm-hmm. It's got yes. scream filling, so when you take a bite, it ah! screams in your mouth. Oh. 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 So you're saying there'll be a party in my mouth? Only if you like nightmares. I would like to invite you to the party in my pants. Um, it smells like Count Chocula cereal. Ricky, yeah. to invite you to a pants party? Um, I'd say this is pretty damn good. It's chocolate cake. 
Mm hmm. Chocolate cake with a little cream in the middle. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. No. I could eat about 12 of these. Oh, those are good. I'm not sure I can eat one. What? It's not that good. Kind of bland. What? Yeah. That's some of the worst chocolate cake I've ever eaten. You're the worst chocolate cake. Okay. I don't know what that means, but you're the worst <laughs> chocolate cake. God, those are good. I like those. Jim, what do you think? I could eat the other three. <laughs> I know. Brian? I'm indifferent. Doug? It wasn't, oh, there's a it wasn't terrible answer. Kind of bland, I chocolate. thought. Okay, Blake? I like how Doug's holding the microphone for me. This is very nice. What do you think, Blake? I just like the fact that he's holding the microphone <laughs> for me. What do you think about the Twinkie? I just like the fact that he's holding <laughs> the microphone for me. It is. You look like an old man over there. You have a, t- a blanket wrapped around you. you got your glasses, your readers on, yeah. and <laughs> you're just in the corner. You're underneath the air conditioner. I had to I had to close that vent, by the way, because the cold air was blowing That's directly why it's so down hot in here. <laughs> Close the air vent? Yeah, it was six of us crowded around a little table, and he's closing the air. <laughs> That's it. Now I'm going to have to use... The World Coke is even worse after eating a chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say, I'm going to have to use this uh, nightmare Coke to wash down this oh. terrible Twinkie. Uh, hey, Jim, I'm a Coke executive. What do you want to make this year? Let's get a new flavor. I got battery acid. What do you think about that? <laughs> Let's do floor cleaner first. Well, only if it's stale. We got to keep the floor cleaner out for like six weeks. I mean, the floors are have to be sticky <laughs> at Coke, right? <laughs> oh, all, yeah. all the time. So yeah. they got to have a good floor cleaner. Hey, uh, we're running out of Coke this month. Uh, get that floor cleaner. Put that in the machine. We're fine. What is that flavor supposed to be, though? <laughs> That's a question, right? I mean, it's, it's it does not say on the, on the bottle. Jim, what did you just put in your Coke? I just put a Jolly Rancher <laughs> Sour in there to try and make it a little better. <laughs> hey, Jim, you want to make Coke Zima this year? <laughs> Being a Coke product, I expect this candy to dissolve within minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it did. <laughs> oh, my God, it's actually going through the plastic cup. Too. On, on, on Reddit, they're saying it's mango and peach with maybe a hint of grapefruit. I do taste the peach. Uh, I taste a little grapefruit. That was the, that was the peach. I think I taste the mango. On here, another one is saying... <laughs> Time out! Jim and Blake, I taste uh, the, the, the peach. Je- Jeff, I taste the mango. Me, I taste the grapefruit. <laughs> I taste the floor. Here, here they're saying a mix of strawberry and watermelon. No. Nope. Nope. No. No. <laughs> Bigger qu- mystery, Doug. I think strawberry watermelon was the space... Hey, hey D- Doug, bigger mystery. How did you find Reddit? And how did you find that I did, I just Googled it. I don't know. I don't know, know what I, Reddit I is. <laughs> I don't know how to use Reddit. Oh, I'm sorry. The marshmallow flavor was supposed to be strawberry and water. Okay, the marshmallow. Okay. In the Twinkie? No. In oh, the, in the Coke. Okay. The Coke. Yeah, we haven't been trying the Coke flavors. I guess we could. I don't know. After that one, I don't know if I want to. It can't be worse. Is there a lot of Coke flavors out there? I don't know. I just know this <laughs> summer they were all doing I'm, things. All I've seen is Starlight and yeah. this now. At the machines, yes. There is? That's what, uh, yeah. So if you go into a restaurant mm-hmm. or a fast oh, food yeah, place, Wendy's it definitely has. Where okay. they have your this make-your-own Coca-Cola. Mm-hmm. They have all those, like, 50 flavors or whatever. Yeah. So Coca-Cola takes that information every time <clears> you <throat> use it. And it downloads, and they use their uh, you know technical analysis, mm-hmm. and that's how they're coming up with new flavors because they're oh. seeing what people are making with their Coca Cola with their flavors. So well, the people need to stop. Yes. Well, you, you can blame peach, you can, mango. You can watermelon. blame those ten to twelve year old kids out there <laughs> hitting all those damn buttons <laughs> that are just wrong. This kid likes watermelon, shoe polish, uh, peach flavored Coke. What they really need to do is just listen to their phone conversations or read their text messages. Then they'll know that they're all idiots. I think they already do. Huh? Huh? What? Uh, yeah. So, wow. That's awful, Doug. Thank you. Yes, no problem. That was wonderful. I tasted it. It was horrible. Whoa. I thought, I want to share it with the rest of the guys. <laughs> I want to make yeah, them I, drink it, too. Right. I, I picked it up last week, and I'm like, let's see how this one is. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh no! Well, I spent a dollar twenty on it. I guess I have to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's a steal for a soda these days. I know. Did you pour it out and clean the floors at your bar? <laughs> you could have done that. Okay. I've eaten away the years of depression. They do say Coke is great for cleaning your toilets. Really? Yes. Mm. Well, 
when, when this stuff comes up later on tonight, we'll see. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see here. Um, anyway, damn it, Blake. Now Blake wants the Oreos. Now he's macking on the Oreos. We're, we're, we're not even that far along. We haven't Calm even down. ahead of We everything. haven't even got past the header. Oreos. 40 minutes in. Okay, so tr- what? Tr- 20. We're only 20 minutes we're, in. We're doing... Oh, oh that's your phone. Uh, yeah, you're right. Sorry. What you're doing, what trivia game would you play? This is the Twitter poll of the week at Bad Ideas Podcast, because we'll be doing trivia all weekend, up on the panel, between the panels, um, and then uh, out in the lines and everything else. Come see us at the Coat Rack Room, the booth. We got tons of prizes, thanks to Comic and Games, uh, thanks to Doug, thanks to myself, thanks to Brad for buying all the things. I think everybody has contributed something in terms of the prizes, when good or bad. Uh, we have a Justice League bag of suck. We have a Nicolas Cage bag of suck. And then we have real good prizes. Uh, so this week was, what trivia game would you play with Hobie and the Cinema Guys at the Cincinnati Comic Expo? We had Harry Potter spell off. Two people cast spells against each other. Justin does that because I have no idea what Harry Potter does. Um, Expelliarmus. You win because the other guy loses their wand. Yep. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Bless you. I'm good. Sing a TV theme song. Uh, name a movie from a line from that movie. This last one, strip yeah. poker. I'm not playing that. No, one no, 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 not strip poker. Oh, that's not. Okay. Doug, you misread it. Good old fashioned trivia. Oh, oh okay. In uh, last place, Harry Potter spell off. Wow. Zero percent. Well, because most people thought they were actually doing a spelling bee. <laughs> <laughs> that actually might be true. P O T T E R. You didn't capitalize it. Oh. H A I R Y. <laughs> you didn't capitalize it. Yeah, Andy it misspelled it. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, sing a TV theme song is in third place at twenty one percent. What? And winning good old forty three percent, thirty six percent. Good old fashioned trivia beating out name a movie from a line. Good news is we're going to be having all of those games and a lot more. Uh, come on down and uh, play. We got tons I of used prizes. To be sad. <coughs> I think we got seven totes of prizes. I used to be shy. They'll, they'll enjoy the good old trivia until they realize it's the original trivia pursuit deck. That the nobody can answer. So yeah. here, except for Jeff. Maybe. So here's the no thing, one Jeff. Answer the answer is David Niven. <laughs> Blake, here's the thing. The Trivia Pursuit game is one of them. We have Trivial Pursuit cards. You have to get five of them correct. <laughs> you get three or less, you get the Nicholas Cage bag of suck. The real Trivia Pursuit. The real Trivia Pursuit. I think pursuit. I do have the real Trivia Not Pursuit. Not the fluffy night. shit that they sell now. Do they have a fluffy Genus one? Genus Edition yeah. 1. Yeah, Genus. I think I, <laughs> I think I have Genius Edition 4. Guinness. The Guinness edition. The Guinness edition. Got to drink and then answer your question. I've got uh, Genus editions one through six. Sure, bring one. Sure. If you want to. We have uh, we got a lot of trivia in there. In that box. I don't know. We got like eight or nine box totes. I have no idea what's in some of those anymore. Oh. And if you're answering one from the, the original edition, the answer is USSR, not Russia. Oh. We will not give you credit for Russia. Is that the 1983 oh. edition? 1981. 81. But if you say the moops, that is correct. <laughs> the moops. The card said the moops. Uh, let's the see moops. here. Um, Did anybody watch anything this week? She Hulk, Quantum Leap. Oh, me too. I didn't realize it started. I know they were advertising last it. night. Ah, oh, okay. <coughs> uh, Star Girl. I watched. I uh, I watched all of Welcome to Wrexham so far. Oh, I got caught up. So yeah. such a good show. What do you think about it? It was entertaining. Yeah. I liked the uh, the Guide to Wales episode. Yes, the Guide <laughs> to Wales episode. The Worldwide really uh, World wa- of uh, Welsh. Yeah, Welsh yeah. or whatever. World Wide World of Wales. Yes. Um, very good. I, it was very entertaining. I like how they spoofed some of the other shows, and they just did did a very good job. On I like Wrexham when they're like, all the, the people living in the town are like, we got Ryan Reynolds, we got... Um, Deadpool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and they're on like, dead, the Deadpool. Yeah. and Rob McElhenney. Yeah, and <laughs> you know we're going to be fine. I mean, we got money coming into this team, and they're like, "Well, uh, we're worse than we were last year." Uh, crap. Never mind. <laughs> Forget it. Uh, it's fun. I mean, it's a good show. I, I hope they keep it going. I liked. It. I guess it was the latest episode when uh, Rob and uh, Ryan showed mm-hmm. up to the the away game. Yes. Yeah. 
And the, the crowd was chanting, Ryan Reynolds, you bought the, the wrong, wrong team. team. Yeah. <laughs> That's when they got there, and he's like, they're, they're not going to boo us, are they? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. well, they're soccer fans. Yeah, European <laughs> soccer fans. They're going to boo you. <laughs> I really, I'll, I'll tell you what. It has exceeded my expectations. My expectations <laughs> really were, I didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. But I, I think they did a great job. See, thank you for the agreement. <laughs> that no, was Brad agreeing. Yes, thank you. No, I, I think it, it, if you don't know what you're watching, you start going into it, Yeah, I think you're going to like it regardless because it, they did a really good job. And it's not heavy. It's not bad. It's very lighthearted and enjoyable. And it's not just about the soccer team. It's how the soccer team has affected the city, yeah. the fans. Um, Jim, do you sense any resemblance to the Bengals community in this? No. How much it has drained us, our hearts? No. You know, it could be worse, though. You don't see Wrexham giving giving up 14 points in a minute and 40 seconds to lose a game. I mean, that would be embarrassing. What team would do that? But but wasn't it to elite quarterback Joe Flacco? It was to Joe Flacco. It was 1 minute 55 seconds. Thank you. (laughs) You know, all you had to do was get an onside kick. Or kick the extra (laughs) We're Bengals fans. <laughs> the sort of well, if they, if their long snapper went out, they'd have an That's excuse. true. That is true. Yeah. I, we, I was watching the uh, highlights, and I'm like, no way. This can't happen to the Browns. It did. Yeah. Um, and, and then you uh, turn to the other television and watch it happen to the Ravens. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was good, though. Everybody likes the, uh, the flying rats to lose. I, I was coming home from Gatlinburg and had ESPN radio on, <clears throat> and one of the, the, the guys talking was saying, you know, it was 28-7, I guess, at the time. And, you know, when a quarterback does this to you, you may come back a little bit. You you never win this game. Which game was that? The, the, the Baltimore game. Oh. Baltimore. <laughs> and it's like, you know, they're just raving about Lamar Jackson. And yeah. he had a great game, but it was, you know, this just demoralizes you. You may get a few points. You you never come back from a game like this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, no the, one told that to Tua. The, the best part is, is that uh, they're going over the stats with a minute fifty-five left, up by thirteen. The Browns, yeah, you're like at like ninety-nine point nine percent victory. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? And, but we found that point one. You know what that caused you guys to lose? Yeah. They put the stat up. Last yeah. time the Browns started two zero was in nineteen ninety three. This is what happened in ninety three, and yeah. then literally right after that, the Jets started coming back. Exactly. It's all right. Uh, Brian, what did you watch? Uh, finished Cobra Kai. Season five? Yep. And? Fantastic. Got better? Yes. It, is karate ruining the... Uh, I mean, it ruins everything. Everything. Did anyone die? Three people so far, and I'm only on episode five. <clears throat> did anyone go to jail? No. Yes. no. Well, there's somebody yes. already in jail. Karate jail? No, like real jail. Oh. Well, there is one person did in real... Did steal a car? In real jail. <laughs> they did not. I mean, it's not for fighting. It is for fighting. No, no, it's karate. No, this the he is in jail for assault. Jim, he, he went beyond karate. Jim, he'll be, it's karate. He threw real punches. Jim, he'll be out in two weeks. It's fine, and then never be mentioned again. <laughs> Did that kid throw another kid off a balcony in the school? Why is he out of juvie? <laughs> like that doesn't make sense. It's, he served so, his time. So, so to be fair, he is currently still on probation. In, oh, well, in season it, five. That makes it fair. So, oh, that makes it fair. I mean, overcrowding, you know, yeah. he's a good kid. In juvie? Oh, yeah. He just almost killed You know how kids. many people that they have in juvie in California for karate-related crimes? <laughs> None! Because <laughs> that's, that's how you settle the, yeah, everything. There, there was overcrowding in jail. That's, that's why, why they, they can't out. arrest any more of, <laughs> of these kids. They cured heroin. They cured every drug addiction. They, now they just, just don't have the resources for that, Jason. <laughs> My it's man. all karate all the time. <laughs> that's it. I mean, karate uh, karate related crimes have went up exponentially. Did you see the the meme out there of um, the Krober Kai guys, Ralph Macchio and um, um, the other guy? Sorry, the, William Zabka. Yeah, and they have them back to back, and they're like, name you know, name poorly named the show, and they're like, a gang war starts because of two middle aged men can't get over their differences. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, that's true. That's pretty much true. But they got over their differences. They did. <laughs> and I, I, so five to me started off way slower than the other four seasons, but man, it finishes great. I, I would say I still have yet to ever watch the third Karate Kid movie, and they keep introducing characters oh, back yeah. from the third movie. I'm like, 
I don't know who you are. Was that with Ralph Macchio or was that Hilary Swank? That was Ralph Macchio. Okay. Yeah. Swank was, was the fourth. She was the next. Okay. Yes. They're making a new Karate Kid movie. Karate Kid, Kid Five. Yeah, I was gonna say they just announced they're making a new reboot. They're making a new reboot of the original Karate Kid. It has is z- that what they're doing? Rebooting? Oh, so it's a reboot, not It has a, yeah. zero tie-ins to Cobra Kai whatsoever. Oh, okay, so it's worthless. So it's a different timeline. I, yeah. All, all the only article that I saw today it just said that it had no, no uh, relation to Cobra Kai. Hey, Blake. In ten years, we're going yes. to have a we're going to have a Cobra Kai Karate Kid multiverse come together, and they're going to fight somebody. And they're going to have to time travel. Yes. When they yeah. bring Jackie Back Chan and Jaden Smith preferably. into, uh, <gasps> what will they the, do? The Karate Kid multiverse. <laughs> Book it. Trademark. 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 We don't own the rights, but we're going to own the rights to that. But since in that Karate Kid, the Jackie Chan one, they. Fought kung fu. Mm-hmm. How would that work at the karate tournament if they start doing kung fu? Because this isn't mixed martial arts tournaments. That's true. This is That's karate true. tournaments. He has to fight Joe Rogan. Oh, okay. It's a weird tournament thing. It's fine. It's fine. Um, no, that's not okay. Is that how it works? No, that's not. Not that's not. Okay. You don't want to see Joe Rogan get punched in the face? I mean, yes, please. Time re- out. Repeatedly. By Jaden Smith. Uh... <laughs> Will Smith. <laughs> Smacking him repeatedly. In I the keep face. your son's name out of <laughs> your mouth. I think I might go with Joe Rogan. <laughs> no. He was in news radio. He sucks. Jaden Earth. Jaden Smith was in After Earth. I mean, let's let's be real here. I'm going with news radio. Well, well, let's be real. Joe Rogan was the worst part of news radio. Was he? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, John Lovitz. W- after Phil. After Hartman Phil died. Hartman died. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See? Talking the Will Smith stuff. So I wa- I rewatched Reacher this week too. Seeing that, and the line he actually uses the line when uh, Reacher makes a comment to the detective about his wife, he actually looks at him and goes, "Keep my wife's name out of your mouth." I'm like, <laughs> "My God, Will, my God, Will Smith stole that line." <laughs> <laughs> Who knew he was such a Jack Reacher fan? I know. <laughs> he should have said was that. Dad was quoting my favorite TV show. <laughs> I thought this was a skit. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Earth. Uh, Blake, did you see anything? Yeah, I'm continuing on with the uh, Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. Rings of Power? Yeah. How's that? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I'm a half episode. I was watching that before I came in today. Uh, I mean, there are some things about it that are kind of good. I mean, as a Lord of the Rings fan, you're dying for more LOTR. Oh, God, yeah. You know, but it's not really... Lords of the Rings, I mean, it's, it's a name only. It's not like the Cimmerillion and all that kind of stuff. So it's weird how they gave them and they paid all that money for the rights, but they can't actually do the original background story, so they have to make up their own shit. So is this like how the rings all became one? Yeah, it's a fantasized version of it, sure. I mean, there's some good stories. I mean, I like the Orendir. I like the I like the elf story. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. And... No, no ends. Actually, you like it. He chops down a tree. Fucking deserved it. That's right. Freaking ant. Was it an oak? No, it was uh, an ant. It's a box elder. No. Oh. I th- but, uh, you know, d- I, I do, I do think, one. and they do the bring large. in, like, a young Isildur, and I'm like, yeah, okay. And if you don't know who these people are, it doesn't mean jack shit to you, but <laughs> Gladriel, fascinating. Gladriel I, I actually find her to be the most disappointing, because she's so one-dimensional. And that's it. I mean, that... No it's, Denethor, though. No Denethor, but there is Not a bowl noble. of cherry tomatoes <laughs> in one scene. Let me ask you, um, is there like 17 different endings to this? Each Ooh, episode? Sure. Like Peter Jackson? No. 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 Is he doing this one? No. no. Okay. He has nothing to do with it. Okay. Nothing at all. Okay. Not I mean, to be the cranky fanboy, but are you actually enjoying that there's Lord of the Rings on? Yes. Yes, okay. I am, because I want more Lord of the Rings. Okay. And I will suffer through this. There are good parts about it, and there are bad parts about it. I mean, there's. They try to get really deep in episode one. Why does a stone sink and a ship float? I'm like, Jesus fucking they answer Christ. They that in the Holy Grail, serious? Monty Python. Yes. I was like, yes, that's the first thing I thought of. You know, what float? What also floats? Little tiny rocks. Small now, granted, that was like the second minute of the entire show. <laughs> Small, I mean, I, I, I got that far yeah. into the show. I think you're focusing yeah. on the wrong thing. But yo, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> but they're, they're, they're trying to be deep on some things. You're like, don't try to be intentionally deep. Just let. 
whoever writes the dialogue just should have let it come naturally and, and, and move on things. And, and, I, and like, you know, Gladriel, she's like, okay, you're driven to find Sauron. A hundred plus years later, you haven't found anything. But you have this company. You come across this snow troll. He wipes out half of your troops. And she's like, yeah, okay. We leave that sun's up. And you're like, you just lost half your remaining troops. She wasn't close to them. That's fine. I mean, that's just an example of how one-dimensional she is. She only has... She only has one style of delivery in her dialogue, which I know they're trying to, you know, whatever. But can, yeah. can you get past a black dwarf? Yeah, <laughs> I did. Wait a minute, there's a dwarf that's black? Oh, my God. Did you know Ariel might be well, black? female dwarf. Yeah, let's, let's What, there's a female dwarf? Oh, I'm out. And she doesn't have a beard. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Um... No, but there, there, there's some good parts, and there's some there's some questionable parts. I, I kind of like it. Obviously, they spent a lot of money, you know, on the cinematography and the CGI backgrounds. I mean, you know, you know, Numenor looks like you know Gondor. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's really nice. I mean, it's pretty cool. Uh, the visuals you know, are the visuals are, are awesome. really good. Yeah. So you could substitute Lord of the Rings, your complaint right there, and you could just put Star Wars in there. You could put. <laughs> Anything that's out, like... Yeah, you, you I just, think we've had the same conversation you, with you Star want, Wars with all of us. Yeah, that's right. You want more Star Wars. Yeah, until you Star Trek. In Star and Trek, you want all this stuff. And, Avatar. And some of it satisfies <laughs> you, and some of it doesn't. <laughs> Avatar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Andor starts uh, when, tomorrow. I bet he lives. No, that would be funny if he died. Yeah. And then it's a clone. Exactly. It's a clone. Twelve. Uh, they The one review I said uh, that I read is, I guess there's three episodes coming yeah. out tomorrow, and they're like... Get ready for your 12-hour Andar movie. I saw that. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I mean, it's a good concept. I wish they would have used somebody else because, you know, he's got plot armor. Yep. You know, no matter what happens or what he does, you're like, yeah, okay. It's like going back doing the Han Solo stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Obi-Wan. You know he's going to live. Yeah, the, exactly. the, the Obi-Wan Kenobi story. Obi-Wan, I mean, it was yeah. like, okay, we know he's going to live. And then they put him in oh, le- death, le- yeah. deathy situations, and you're like, all yeah. right. I'm sorry, I just thought that last okay, fight Blake, was one more thing about the Lord of the Rings. Was it could be worse. Yeah. It could be what they did to Wheel of Time. Yeah, we'll, we, at least I will say they have better actors for this. The Wheel of Time actors, I don't... They better they're actors, the, sto- they, the story is... Well, they, they can make their own story. They don't have yeah. to ruin and change parts of the other story. Correct. <laughs> Tell that to the uh, Tolkien experts out there who are complaining about um, they're ruining everything that Tolkien stands for. In, in episode two, uh, the Ent, he moved with his right leg first. Uh, most there was no Ent in episode two. You everybody keep knows about the Ent moves with the left leg first. Like, I don't know who that is, but they should be fired for that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, there's some pretty cool things. It's like, you think, you, you think you see the first arrival of Gandalf, mm-hmm. you know, for example, when the Valar sent him out. See the guy with the white beard? Well, he's not white yet. Oh, but you know that that doesn't make sense though because there were other uh, Valar that were sent, so he's not the only ones. Like, where's everybody else? But yeah, it, you know what? It, here's here's the deal: <laughs> you accept the fact that it's not real Lord of the Rings, but it's Lord of the Rings. Think of it, Lord of the Rings, as fan fiction, and you'll be more satisfied with everything. Well, I like it more than Wheel of Time. Of, Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What if I don't like fan fiction? Well, then, yeah. Try the Wheel of Time. Do you like fictional fans? Uh, If that means they're not real, then yes. Okay. But I I will say the Wheel of Time was really... Bad? I didn't think... Horrible? Yeah, I didn't really think it was good. (laughs) And I never read the books, so I had no vestment in it, right? Yeah. I had no blood to lose. I did, but yeah, you it did. Sucked. If you read the <laughs> exactly, if you read the thirty thousand pages in fifteen novels that make the Wheel of Time, plus the two others that his son wrote, right? Yeah, or what is it? I can't remember the number nope. of novels. Uh, he wrote like ten, and Brandon Sanderson finished the last three and a half. Yeah. So yeah, if you are into, it, and of course. The other people I know, Wheel of Time, they're like, and, and even just watching the movie doesn't make a lot of sense. It's just like, we're going to go here, we're going to go here, we're going to go here, this happens, and boop, there you go. I'm like, I have no investment in these characters. Brian and I watch uh, have Wheel of Time on in the background for D&D night. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Really liked it, haven't we, Brian? Yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. Brian, would you watch Rings of Power? Nope. Are you not into fantasy like that? Nope. Okay. Just asking. Not my jam. Okay. 
Uh, anybody else watch anything? What, what did you think of Quantum Leap? I enjoyed it. My wife's like, she's like, I'll give it a couple more episodes. I was like, she never saw the original. And so, I know. What? She doesn't like Princess Bride. She never saw the original Quantum Leap. It, there's some issues here. Um, You're still married. I know. Well, she does have your Venmo account. She does have my Venmo account because I don't have one. Uh, I enjoyed it, though. Like, it was very similar to the original. Like, there's some... They, they, they don't take it too seriously. I don't like that there's a bigger conspiracy out there. Why is there always a bigger conspiracy? I, I thought it was too action movie. I think when the he was first... breaking up the bank. Okay, and... and He learned how to drive a clutch pretty quick. Yes, the uh, the repeats are on, and just earlier, I guess last mm-hmm. week, I had seen the one where Sam Beckett jumps back to his family. Yeah. Do you remember that one? The Vietnam one? And then he goes to Vietnam after yeah. that. Yeah. Who was he in Vietnam? His brother, right? No, he was his brother out of his Oh, house. it was his body, that's right, yeah. Who was that? I don't know. His name was Magic. Magic Johnson? No. Ernie Hudson's character. Ah, okay. Because he even mentioned being in Vietnam. Yeah, I knew that. Yes. Wow. There was a lot of callbacks to the original, Mm -hmm. but they did it in a nice, subtle, like, I really, I I enjoyed it. Like, some of the characters were kind of annoying. Yes, uh, yes. Um, Just because, and I think it was the problem that we've talked about before on the show, like, the plot, you're trying to throw everything out there. And I think it's like, sometimes you just got to let it breathe. And I think that's part of the issue I had with it. But I enjoyed it, and uh, let, it, let it let the story happen. Let the story happen naturally instead yes. of trying to cram it all in the first fifty six. Yeah, minutes. and like there's so much exposition on it. That's the problem because it's the first episode. They're trying to get everybody caught up to speed. But overall, I enjoyed it. Um, I, I would continue watching it. I like the lead. I think he yeah. did okay. Yeah. Um, I got to I got to admit the commercials for it mm-hmm. are less than exciting. <laughs> I could well. Do you feel like any broadcast network commercials for TV shows are good though? Is there though? D- did Did you see who he jumps into in the one commercial though? Mm-mm. Joe Montana. Really? Yes. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> it would have been better if it was Joe Theismann. <laughs> oh, right, right <laughs> before he gets crushed. <laughs> you're, you're You're supposed to make sure he doesn't break his leg. What What am I doing? Ah! <laughs> Joe Montana would be awesome if he doesn't make the completed pass to the, against the Bengals in the Super Bowl. That's what he's supposed to do. Or maybe he could jump into new Guinness spokesman, Joe Burrow. Oh, he's Guinness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they got the Joes. Oh. My goodness, my Guinness. I, uh, my fear is that there's going to be many multiple timelines now going, remember? Because he's going into this timeline, mm-hmm. and then that time I'm like... Oh no! This is going to be. This is going to get messy. Can we? We just keep it straight and narrow, like the last one. Ernie Hudson's awesome. Yeah, I love yeah. Ernie. So, I would. Would you continue watching? Yes, but how much of it is because I like the other? Correct. You know, I'm willing to give it a little bit more. Yeah. So, who's the lead actor in it now? Uh, I'll get his. I'll get his name. Is here. he going to make a? It's an Asian guy, and he, it's ruined my childhood because because the time <laughs> jumper has to be a white guy. That's right. That's is, right. Is he eventually going to make a movie about uh, playing college football <laughs> as a like a forty year old? Yes, because I'll watch that. Yes, it'll be Kate Upton instead of Kathy Ireland as the kicker. Raymond Lee. There you go. Um, he, I, I think he does a good job. Yeah. Um. And I think they had to do an action-packed one to get the people involved. Yeah, he was... Uh, what else is he from? That's what's wrong with Because he looks television. familiar. I mean, you've seen him before. It's, um, what other TV shows that he's in? Here and Now. He was in Top Gun 2. <laughs> really? Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. He was in Kevin Can Fuck Himself. Uh, F Himself. Yeah, he's the uh, the bartender, the yep. uh, own restaurant owner of yep. the uh, her old high school flame. That's By a, the way, I didn't even... I, know him from. I didn't even... I didn't even realize that uh, Kevin Can F Himself was even back on the air. Like, I hadn't seen any commercials for it. And then I looked, and it's like five episodes in of the second season. Um, oh, second season? Yeah, it's, they renewed it for a second and final. They're not doing any more, but... What channel is it on? AMC. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I had no idea it was even back. And I was, like, waiting for it. And then I just saw, like, I happened to be watching something and saw the commercial for it. And I looked it up, and it's like episode five. Um, we were talking 
a couple weeks ago about shows that have fallen off and then you try to get back on. <clears throat> We're catching up on The Rookie. We got yeah. like two episodes left. I'm so far behind on that. Oh, the Niecy Nash, uh, uh, you know, uh, spinoff. Oh, it's going to be bad. Like her character is, I like her. Her, ca- it's. I don't think you're going to be able to. Character from Reno 911. Yes, yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's I, <laughs> it's going to be struggling. Is it the same character she does on Don't Forget the Lyrics? I don't have you. I'm sorry, my mic was down. So, uh, was it the same character she plays on Don't Forget the Lyrics? Yes, yes. Okay. She sings the whole time. I have seen a couple of commercials for it, and it, again, doesn't look great. Yeah. The, the backdoor pilot that they did with Rookie, it was a little rough. Um, yeah. So, I like the Rookie, though, still. Yep. Uh, Jeff, anything else you saw? You said She-Hulk? Caught up on She-Hulk. Uh, what are you thinking about that? I'm liking it. It is what it is. I understand why people might not enjoy it. I understand why people really like it. I'm somewhere in between. Are you upset that Disney decided to make a female version of the Hulk? Yeah, yes. I was so angry when I heard Disney was oh. making a female version of the Hulk that Marvel created in the 70s. Mm-hmm. But why does it have to be female? Couldn't She-Hulk be a he? Yeah. Damn it. Uh, where do you think Hulk's going in the ship? Uh, he was going back to whatever planet that was. The, but why? To meet his son. You think? Oh, okay. You think that's the reason? I think that's the reason. Yeah, they're saying what a World War Hulk yeah. movie. Yeah. Huh. Because they can have her be the lead and not him. He can't be the lead in a movie. Why? Because of the Universal or whatever studio has R- his rights. Really? So he can be in a movie, but he can't. They can't make a Hulk movie. Yeah, Universal still has rights yeah. to Hulk. I can't wait for that Edward Norton sequel, then. Can't wait for that one. Woo! Oh, God. Um. And and have you did you see the Werewolf by Night trailer? Uh, no. Okay, well, apparently Man Thing's in there. Oh. I don't know who that is. Is Werewolf by Night a Disney, uh, Marvel thing? Yes. Disney Plus. It's their uh, Halloween special. Oh. Is it a series or just one? Just episode? one. Just a one-off. Oh. Werewolf. Werewolf by Night. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> Um, so, one of the comments on one of the, uh, things I was reading about, um, so, there's a T, uh, show, well, I'll wait till the, I'll wait till the News of the Geek, it's about the spin, the, uh, parody of the Joker, the People's Joker that got cease and desist, the we'll talk about that. Joker. Yeah, we'll talk about that in the News of the Geek, uh, cause it re- goes in with the She-Hulk and all that stuff, so. My thing with She-Hulk is... I know it's part of the MCU, but as I'm watching, and I like it, I don't see it in that same vein just because it's such, it's much more of a comedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a completely different. Yeah, even though it's in that and same universe, I don't think of it as being like yeah. that. I mean, yeah, th- this is more of yeah a sitcom than than anything else, and I mean, even uh, Ms. Marvel had a different feel to it. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it's they're, they're trying to attract different audiences and. You know, some people that will like this won't like something else, and vice versa. I love Ms. Marvel. Yeah, so did I. I did too. I like the, I like the ending. Yeah. But I, I will say I'm definitely not the target audience they're aiming at. No. My daughter, my eight year old daughter, really liked it. Okay. And, and spoilers here. Yeah. The, uh, the, the Marvels, I believe, mm-hmm. trailer ran at D23. Yes. And apparently, when Brie Larson switched with mm-hmm. Ms. Marvel, mm-hmm. Ms. Marvel went to where Monica Rambo is, and she went to where Captain Marvel was. So all three it's of a them three are three-way switch. Yes. Ah. Yes. Okay. They said that's not getting good review, like good test audiences. I don't. I, I find that bullshit because I feel like any time that you have Brie Larson in something, mm-hmm. like with Disney, like even Captain Marvel, like everybody was ripping on it, and then like, well, the loud minority. Right. I right. Say. Right. Um, I love Captain Marvel. I love that first movie. Um, when I asked her, when somebody interviewed, I asked her, are you going to make another one? She goes, does anybody want me to? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like in She-Hulk, though, where she's she's just throwing it right back at him, where, you know, well, you know, Wong's in this, and she'll turn to the camera and, well, that'll give us Twitter armor for a week. Yes. Or you know, it's just, she's just, and I, and I guess the... 
the, the I, did you guys mention this? Maybe I, you know, where the, the tweets in the show yeah, were Jeff actual, just, yeah, were live, yeah. Uh, Wong is awesome. Yes. Just bring it, put him in everything. Very nice guy, too. He was. He was at Cincinnati yes. Comic Expo a couple of years ago. Really nice guy. So what did you think of Madison with two N's and a Y, not where you expect? I like her. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's saying she's the runaway hit of she yeah, yeah. But, 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 you know, she had to give a, a devil or a demon some blood. What, Mephisto, Mephisto. Oh. That's what it is. The guys on New Rockstar says it's confirmed. <laughs> right. And that means that Spider-Man's marriage doesn't count, right? Is that part of it? <laughs> Is that Spider Man's not married in the MCU? Oh, how do you know? It could be a different timeline. <clears throat> Don't you know this, Jeff? <laughs> okay, anyway. okay. And, and spe- speaking of, if you mentioned Spider Man, you, you get the Little Mermaid thing. I realize you replaced her with an African American woman. <laughs> yes, but but does anybody get upset like this when Michael Keaton got replaced with George Clooney? Or, and I realize they're being with the same race, but. Actors change all the time. What no, because there's no internet. Well, good point. <laughs> you know what they had to do? Write a letter to the editor. And then that editor is like, I'm not fucking publishing this. <laughs> Why are they bitching about George Clooney taking over? Fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, uh, they really didn't complain when Bra- <clears throat> excuse me, when Brandy played Cinderella in the 90s. Oh, my God. How dare good they? Good point, yeah. Um, Doug, did we get anything else wrong on D23? I feel like all of us did really good last week. Did a fine of, job. I was yeah. highly impressed. Brian was talking about the Some, rides. Yeah, I wasn't going to mention that. Yeah, but the rides. Those look awesome. <sighs> yes, yes. Big, but big fun fan. rides. Very fun. The hotels look great. Uh, yeah, the, the hotels. Was that Six Flags? Cause, motel. Because Disney has attractions. What attractions do they have? Uh, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Pirates of the Caribbean. Like they have characters walk around? Is that the attractions? No, no, no. Those sound like rides. No, they're attractions. Rides are like something you get in, right? And, and then it takes you somewhere. Yeah. And then... Attractions you just kind of see, like, oh, yeah. okay, that's Frontier great. Frontier Town. What's that? Frontier Town. Yeah, that's a good attraction. Uh, that's an attraction, okay. right? Yeah. Okay, now I think it's time for listener feedback. <laughs> okay, Blake, take it away. Uh, there you go. There's your bomb listener feedback sound effect. <laughs> uh, brought to you this week by Cincinnati Comic Expo. Hey. Yeah. When is that again? Friday through fr- uh, Sunday. Oh, okay. Sorry. thought Blake was going to do that. No, that's your job. I don't oh, okay. what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. What are you talking about? <laughs> just just be at the downtown Friday afternoon, Blake. Do I have to pay for parking? Yes. No! <laughs> Get in there. Uh, you know, usually we start off with Doug with listener feedback, but there's no name associated with this question, so <laughs> I don't know who the fuck sent this one oh, in. Oh, okay. Or, or bad, or you know, some, some bad, uh, you know, show outline typing. Damn cabin know. boy. I was it's, out splitting wood. That's right. <laughs> Can't even bring his own outline. No, it's I time of that year. Why. It's that time of year again. Dot dot dot. Toy Hall of Fame nominations. What are your picks from this year's nominations? You know, some of these aren't toys, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> that bingo. Is a toy. Briar horses. I don't know what briar horses are. They're, They're little tiny horses. Okay. They're toy horses. They are a collectible brand that are pretty much the... Uh, can you put them on the next Beanie game board for Catan? Of horses. Catan? Oh. You, you can put it on them, but it would make no sense. And, and yes. they, they would be giant horses to the Catan board. Yes. Uh, Light Bright. Nerf Toys. Hmm. Masters of the Universe. A pinata. I can't. I can't <laughs> take this seriously anymore. <laughs> oh, it gets worse. Phase ten. What the fuck is phase ten? It's, it's a, a car card game. game. Everybody. <laughs> Jinx. Except, okay. Everybody knows except for Blake. All right. And me. <laughs> okay. Pound puppies. Oh, nothing like getting dogs from the pound. Let's make them in stuffed animals. All right. I had one. Rack. Right. Oh. They are great, actually. Racco. What's that? I don't know. It's a tile game. Oh, okay. Okay, Spirograph. Yeah. Nobody a, likes a Spirograph. In a like top. Spirograph. Uh, and a top. Yeah. <laughs> Not battle tops that you can, you know, use to fight. Or a the t-shirt tops. top. These are just tops. Just a yeah. top. Okay. It, it's only like one of the first toys ever, ever invented. Mm-hmm. Oh. Should have been for, one of the first inductees. For the record, the only two podcasts that ever talk about this. Mm-hmm. Tony Kornheiser has a podcast, and this one. Look at that! This is the, and and for the record, last year Tony Kornheiser. 
Last year, the inductees were Risk, mm-hmm. American Girl Dolls, and Sand. Just a little, you know. Sand? Sand, sand. yes. Play Sand. Can't wait till the Lava Rocks are in next. <laughs> Rock is already in. Oh, sorry. And, and, and a side note before we get into this, as I was... Like, how boring does that have, like, those, like, <laughs> pr- presentations have to be? <laughs> All right, next up. The little shit on the ground at the beach. <laughs> like you step on it, you can play in it, you can yeah. build a house in it, you build castles. sand castles. Come on. It's been around for millions of years. Probably you put it, you a put million it, years. You put it in your backyards in a bo- in a box. Put it in uh, an aquarium and, and your fish it, can play with it. And then your cat pees in, in it. it. It's a Poops giant it. litter box in your backyard. Okay, and real, real quick here, I as well as mm-hmm. you know, researching this. Uh, the, the place that has the Toy Hall of Fame also has the Video Game Hall of Fame. Yes. And did you guys discuss the, the ones that were inducted? Yes, last year. Okay. Yes, we did. Well, this year's. Oh, no. Uh, Legend of Zelda, Zelda Ocarina of Time. Okay. Yes, we did discuss yeah, we did. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, okay. we did. Okay, then why didn't NBA Jam get in? Because it's not that good. Yes, it is. Because Ocarina of Time deserved to be in. It did. Dance Dance Revolution. I can't defend that. Uh, the um, highest grossing arcade game of all time, probably. Yeah, uh, it was big in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> so, so was I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so which one do you pick? Blake, which one are you picking? You only pick one? We well, pick three. Oh, they pick three. 100% Nerf Toys has to make it. Yeah, I'm going Nerf, Nerf Toys has got to go in. Masters w- of the Universe? No. no I think Light Bright's going to make it. Light Bright, Nerf Toys. Yeah, I wasn't and, sure on Light well, Bright, because like, I know... Well, I have a connection to Light Bright, but I didn't know if it had the same genera- uh, multi generational. They still well, sell it. Stranger it's, it's, Things. It's getting that Stranger Things bump. I yeah, but, I was about but, but to say. Stranger Things is my generation. So, but it was just in the Stranger Things season yeah. this year. A whole new generation of kids now want know what Light Bright is. Same with Metallica, because of Stranger Things. Apparently, mm-hmm. they're. Apparently the best. Well, and then yeah. they found out, so they said some stuff, and they had to cancel Metallica. Uh, and I would say bingo. Yeah. Bingo? Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, think about it. Well, they always take an odd one, so it's going to be bingo, pinata, or a top. I, I'd go for the top. i go top. I can't believe top is not in yet. Nerf toys definitely have to yeah. go. And I want I, Masters of the Universe should be in there. I think Masters of the Universe appealed to a group of people for a very short period of time. Kind of like Pound Puppies? Yes. Okay. Phase That's 10. my vote. What about Briar Horses? Racco. Nope. Well, sp- well, Spirograph. Someone turn off your phone. Amber alert. Amber, Amber alert. alert. Yeah. We interrupt Did, this program. Can you turn off the Amber alert back there? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming for you, Blake. Well, Spirograph is another thing that's one of those classic kind of toys things. Yeah. With art. I mean, I, I, I know sticking a, a, a pen in a circle and moving it around is pretty exciting. But, but again, like I said, I think Spirograph, I know it was classic. big at our generation, but well, I don't know. Our gener- before our generation. This is like 1950s. Man, oh. this is a lot of fun. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, you around. don't have the little wheel geary thing to put you in. You know what? You don't need Spirograph in. You need the ones with the monster plates that you sh- you do the tracing on top Fashion of. Fashion plates? No, not f- well, Yeah, but the monster version. <laughs> You had the those, Doug. The Monster Maker, yeah. Yes. 2011 inductee, Blanket. <laughs> Although I will go ahead and say, because, you know, games and toys not mm-hmm. necessarily fit in the same thing, I will say as a game, Catan is definitely a major player mm-hmm. that oh, yeah. changed the way people look at board games. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> it's still a number one draw at Gen Con. It's not that good of a game, but a lot of people, uh, it kind of started, intro- it started the new uh, designer board game craze. It's the marijuana and, of. And it has. Yes, it's a gateway game. Okay. And it has the joke of wood for your sheep. Yes. Who wants wood for sheep? Too? What else we got here, Blake? Wait, wait, real quick. 2005 inductee, cardboard box. <laughs> I'll take that up a blanket. How is this thing, like, how is this even a thing? Have, have you seen kids in their boxes? No. Have you never played with a cardboard box? <laughs> oh, that's the best part. Oh, I, mean, about I, I did, yeah. but I oh, never God. see kids playing with boxes anymore. Well, Kids don't go them. outside anymore. This is a Hall of Fame. Well, yeah, but you play with boxes inside. <laughs> <laughs> if floor, it gets rained on, it falls apart. The floor's lava is a lock for next year. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> 
What else you got here, Blake? Embarrassing uh, from Canadians the of, of the fame. Year. Uh, Canadian of the Year. Oh. Archaeologists. Ooh. Discovered bone dice that are 6,000 years old that were used in games and tribal rituals. Are these the first D&D dice? And if so, did they get past level three? They most assuredly did not get past level three. It was only 6,000 years since they were oh. playing. To be over third level in that amount of time is ridiculous. Yeah, the first dodecahedron. What level were you on, Jim? One. One. Oh, <laughs> you started over though, right? I'm still my character's still paralyzed though. <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. I, I am a torch stand. <laughs> I stopped the timer. It will begin running when we begin the next session. Are you, are you, so you're the Jason Street of D and D. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> so, what is your character? It's a halfling monk. What are you? I, I am a human archer. Okay, I like that. I'm, Doug, sorry. I'm half elf. I'm sorry, not Doug. Half Blake. human. <laughs> what are you? Archer. Oh, you're the D and D master. Yeah. Well, you want to tell him what your what your name is, Jeff? Oh, my character's name is Kevin James. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And what's What's your character look like? It looks like Kevin James. <laughs> <laughs> but, with, but with pointy ears. <laughs> you know what? I can see that. I can see that. Uh, That's amazing. <laughs> when Brian and I were playing the other night, we did have a queen, uh, King of Queens type D and D game. What do you so mean you were playing the other night? You guys beat it. I thought you guys yeah, stopped we did, playing. We're doing variations now. Yeah, I mean it's really all we got left. This is this is the mall cop <laughs> module. <laughs> Brian jumped on a dragon, delivered packages. It was exciting. <laughs> yeah. Did slay it. You just used it. It's great for that New York traffic. Oh. <laughs> Heard your back was getting tight. Oh. Anyways, what else you got here, Blake? Randall Holt. Gummy Bears. <gasps> the cartoon series premiered 37 years ago last Tuesday. Since it's Jason's best hit, <laughs> will they reboot it with Gummy Bears Pot THC? I think it says, please have him sing that song. No, it didn't. Gummy bears, gummy bears, where did you go? I don't know. Gummy bears, ow, stop hitting me. You didn't and even put the mask bears. on. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you got to wear the mask when you sing it. Gummy bears, gummy bears, what? where did you go? I can't wait where to get another one of these this year. Get a new color mask. This I year. don't know. Gummy bears, coming from Disney. No and no. That was season eight. It, it's literally amazing to me that people still listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll never not blow my mind. Decent amount, too. It's yeah. Scary. It's like, scary. I'm telling you. A lot more than Jeff and I thought yeah. were listening, like, in the beginning. <laughs> Wait for the stony reboot. Of the St- podcast? <laughs> no, Gummy Bears. Oh, sorry. <laughs> gummy Bears. Colon Gummies. <laughs> It's a horror movie. <laughs> colon gummies? Ew. <laughs> you got no. a bad stomach? Get colon gummies. Colon gummies. <laughs> well, that's one way to take in some THC. Yeah. All right. Steve at EILFM. Everything I learned from movies. Well, this just in from Steve at EILFM. Did you know that you can order buttons, magnets, bottle openers, and more from at Untidy Venus using the code HobiePod? Use HobiePod, you save 20% at Untidy Venus. Remember, use uh, the code HobiePod to save 20%. HobiePod also gets you savings on Hello Jeff. Jeff, Jeff yes. what do you have for your uh, bu- uh, dinner box this, year, this month? This month is a grab bag of everything we had left over from the last previous uh, weeks. So Steakums, Pop-Tarts? Could be any of them. Brussels sprouts? Nope, they okay. are never going to be delivered Sorry. in Sorry. Hello Jeff. Steakum pop tarts. How about that pop tart flavored steakums? If you want to take a steakum and a pop tart and put them together, that's up to you. Oh, well, you we put will it... only send so the you can use the pop tarts as the bun. Oh, oh. and the steakums meat. I like, like that. that. That's why two pop tarts come in one bag. Right. Steakums coming from Disney. Why? Why does everything come from Disney? Because they own everything. No, they have a lot of good rides. Stop though. it. Lots of good rides. Uh, tons of uh, Great rides. rides. Yeah. And hotels, motels. Yeah. Avatar Land's my favorite attraction. Yeah. Okay, Can't Blake, who's that. next? Yes, uh, send in your uh, listener feedback advertisement next week. <laughs> we'll read it for you. I've had it this podcast. Uh, next one from uh, Professor Number One and Doctor Number One. Will Blake actually show for the expo this year? 
Blake, are you showing? I don't know. I got a lot of shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> You're showing Friday and Saturday. That's the rumor. It's my wedding anniversary weekend. You get that every year. Who cares? You're on the schedule. Let, let's just be let's be real, Blake. Your wife would enjoy her wedding yeah. anniversary without you a lot more than with you. <laughs> <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> with me at the Comic Expo yes. Yes. and her in her uh, soapy bath yes. and candles. <laughs> with with Roma uh, candles. With the pool boy serving her fresh fruit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was wondering why we had a pool boy, but no pool no. yet. <laughs> the pool boy's back. Man, he, he comes over here a lot. Can he at least rake some leaves? Come on. <laughs> That's going to be too strenuous. <laughs> uh, Jeff, give me some news of the geek music. News of the geek. Per Newsweek, a man was mauled to death. Or, sorry, per Newsweek, where Jim gets all of his news from. A man was mauled to death by a zoo's lion after allegedly attempting to steal one of her cubs. Good. I'm so bad for this man. I do not. The incident happened around 12 p.m. local time, because that's important, at the Accra Zoo, located in Accra, the capital city of Ghana. The unnamed man, believed to have been in his 40s, was first spotted hopping a security fence at the zoo, making his way into the lion enclosure, according to the Telegraph. Yeah, the Telegraph! At the time that he entered the space, there were two white lion cubs in the enclosure with their mom. First off, it's not a good idea. Don't do I that. I think he thought he was ninja quick. The <laughs> he was not. Spoilers. The adult lion pounced on the man. What? As soon as it spotted him entering the enclosure. Quote, the lions have cubs, so if you come too close, they may feel you're trying to take away their babies. Which he was. <laughs> trying Allegedly. To. Allegedly. Benito Awaso Bayo, Deputy Minister for Lands and Natural Resources in Ghana, told reporters in the statement following the incident. Quote, we asked the public to des- desist from doing anything like this. Yeah. Please don't see our cubs. <laughs> I mean, they got, they've got to they've got to fill those uh, can hunting sites somehow. <laughs> so, so is this Fucking probably assholes. just suicide by lion? It might be. It's a pretty painful way to go. Authorities have so far stressed that the man's motives for entering the enclosure are unknown. I can kind of figure out what it is. It is, however, su- heavily sus- suspected that he was attempting to see at least one of them due to their rarity. White lions, a condition caused by a rare genetic mutation in South African lions. You're a rare genetic mutation. Thank you. That causes their fur to take on a fairer color. Considered sacred in some African cultures. Hey, you know this is sacred? Let's go fucking steal it. That's a good way to do it. Uh, white lions are heavily targeted by poachers, fuck you, for their value on illicit markets. Experts estimate that only a dozen white lions currently exist in the wild, with the cubs at Accra Zoo having been bred from two adults with the correct recessive traits to produce the effect. Uh, the body, the man's body was successfully removed from the enclosure. And oh, that's to a more. shame. <laughs> the, should, I, shouldn't he have to go to the hospital be to, to be declared dead? I mean, Down I, the hall! <laughs> no. I, I think she just left him there for feed. Yeah. <laughs> Would save some money, right? I mm-hmm. saw nothing! <laughs> Uh, the investigation into the situation remains ongoing. Nope. Uh, the zoo officials are cooperating with the local police. They have security camera. They're not throwing people in, right? Uh, after, uh, let's see here. Um, sorry. The uh, necessary the poli- forensic examination of the scene. Yeah, whatever. Uh, the police are working with the management of the zoo and the Forestry Commission to get to the bottom of this unfortunate incident. Is it unfortunate? Is well, it, it is because we're talking about it. No, I'm rooting for the lions. Yeah, but the fact that we have to talk about people dying stupidly yes. to lions. Jim, are we putting this on the board for the Worsley Award winner at the end of the year? Hell yeah, we are. Woo! I have a question. Does this make uh, Harambe justifiable homicide then because, you know, he would have killed a kid? Never forget. Never forget. I wish people would forget <laughs> and stop fucking talking about it. You know, my niece is on a soccer team. And every every time they get a, a team picture together, like a soccer tournament, they have a cutout of Harambe in it. I'm like, what? I don't get that. But they do. Never forget. Running joke. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, thank you. Following D23, Disney has updated its release date schedule and the big news by SanFranciscoGazette.com, where Jeff gets his news from. No, I get my news from the gas pump. Oh, that's right. Road uh, Squadron is no longer dated. It's been obvious for some time now that the movie wouldn't blast into theaters <laughs> as planned on December 22nd, 2023, but it's not even on the calendar at all. Uh, the idea is that the movie has probably been scrapped. Uh, marks another embarrassment. Does it? For Lucasfilm, yes. as the studio continues struggling to figure out the big screen movies. Uh, Solo underperformed 
Uh, and because of that, many of the spinoff movies halted. Did they, though? They just went to Disney Plus as TV series. Um, let's see here. Um, also, sorry. Uh, in fairness, the studio can't be blamed for David Bainoff and D.B. Weiss's ditching their planned Star Wars trilogy for a lucrative Netflix deal. deal or Is Ryan. what happened? Yeah. Bainoff and Weiss ditched finishing... Game, of, uh, Game of, Thrones. of Thrones in a decent way, so they can jump on the Star Wars mm-hmm. uh, contract. Then they jumped and, off and that. They jumped off that. I hate you, Netflix. Ryan Johnson choosing to uh, chose to prioritize the N- Knives Out franchise, and Lucasfilm made a point of revealing Wonder Woman director Patty Jen- Jenkins would helm the Rogue Squadron at the end of the 2020 in a pricey reveal video. So they were pretty excited about it. Um, Creative differences have clearly led to Jen- Jenkins deciding against telling a story she once described as a passion project. Uh, while there are movies uh, in there are movies in the works from Jeff Taika Waititi, thank you, and Kevin, hey, those still be a, a long way off. Uh, let's see here. Disney has also announced the following. What I was going to talk about: if you're Ryan Johnson, yes, w- wouldn't you like want to make Knives Out, which people actually loved? Rather than getting death threats for what what he did with Star Wars, do you think that's part of the people reason why they can't get some develop some oh yeah directors in that because yeah, the, the fans are horrible yeah um let's see Disney has also announced the following Doug get ready you excited about this next school wins I have no idea I don't know what that no is idea. next next April Haunted Mansion starring Rosario Dawson is August eleventh two thousand twenty three they've been trying to get that for a while Wish. November 22nd, 2023. Uh, this is the one that Jeff's excited about. Untitled Marvel Studios film is now in September 6, 2024. Uh, Elo is March 1st, 2024. Oh, the Elo live Elo. action Snow White. Oh, can't wait. March 22nd, 2024. Jason can't wait for this next one. Oh, fuck sadness. Inside Out 2, June, 24, June 14th, 2024. Hey, sadness, don't touch that. Why? Oh, well, we just got a movie now. Why? Because sadness broke it. Screw her. God, she's annoying. You know, sadness is an emotion that all of us need and have to utilize properly. She's a horrible character. You're a horrible character. You're a horrible character. And Mufasa. Mufasa. You're a horrible nonfiction character. (laughs) Yeah. The Lion King, July 5th, 2024. It's a prequel about the life, the growing up of Mufasa. That's how Mufasa learned how to be king. Jeff, it's live action. No, it isn't. It uh, actually stars some white cubs from South Africa. <laughs> and a guy jumped. Oh, that would be Ghana. I, oh, I bet Mufasa lives. Ah, ah, does he? Does he? I don't know. Well, it depends on how far the movie goes. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, per, per comicbookmovie.com, where Doug gets all of his news from, Vera Drew, the filmmaker behind a coming-of-age movie set... In the Batman universe... Oh, I'm sorry. Coming out of age movie. Did you just call her Vera? <laughs> he did. Vera? Yes. Vera. Yeah, yeah that's You've heard e. the name Vera before. That's an E. You? Yeah, Norm's wife. Yep. Vera Drew, the filmmaker behind a coming-of-age movie set in the Batman universe known as The People's Joker, has been pulled from the mo- has movie pulled from the Toronto International Film Festival after a single screening over alleged rights issues. The mixed-media comic book satire following an aspiring clou- clown, played by Drew, Struggling with her gender identity while dreaming of being cast in a TV sketch show among a cast of Jokers and Harlequins. The film, which contains multiple references to the Clown Prince of Crime and other Batman-related properties, like Bane, the Riddler, Catwoman, was pulled after Warner Brothers saw it, or saw something, and sent a cease and desist uh, to both TIFF, the production company, oh yeah, sorry, and Drew due to copyright infringement. Obviously very disappointing for the creative team behind the film, is it? They probably shouldn't have come as too big of a shock when the trailer probably proclaims the project to be a, quote, illegal comic book movie about a transgender clown named Joker. Uh, the official synopsis from Tiff reads, quote, when comedy criminalized in Gotham City, the show is the only government-sanctioned space for funny people, but only those who will tow the party line. Disillusioned by a botched audition, Vera partners with a bird-like, sl- bird-like slacker to uh, find their own alternative comedy troupe, attracting not only rogues galleries of would-be comics, but also the ire of a fa- fascist caped crusader. Fascist caped crusader. Uh, it looks horrible. I saw the trailer for it, 
and I get that it's supposed to be a satire. It is a horrible looking trailer. Like it's like that poor CGI, really cheap background. It's like well, it was very cheaply made. I know, but like, couldn't you go into a person's apartment and film it? But they like have like the green screen apartment behind them. It's very odd. Um, the best part is, doesn't matter if you like it or not. You can always go to YouTube for the best comments. All right. Let's hear these comments. Life left ajar. This guy. She-Hulk, Rings of Power, and now this. Before I die, I would really like to see a comic book accurate adaptation or even someone who has the courage to generate the original author's ideas. And like make it She-Hulk? And make it somewhat of an artistic masterpiece. I'm artistic all for diversity. masterpiece. <laughs> I'm all, you know that Joker guy. film? That looked awful. <laughs> I'm all for diversity, and if you want to call yourself a one-eyed pigeon, go ahead and have fun. It's your life. But if you're going to create a version of something and base off a well-known character, well, you need to know. You need kind of need to actually know and have it make sense and have the viewers understand that it's all about the character. Like She-Hulk. <laughs> no, no, She-Hulk, based off of pretty much <laughs> the She-Hulk comic book that its creator. Uh... Why do they have to make Hulk She a female? We need more one-eyed pigeon representation. <laughs> I'm like... You do know why they even created the character of She-Hulk. Why? Because after they made the uh, Bill Bixby television mm-hmm. show, they figured someone is going to do it, and mm-hmm. we better do it first to keep the rights. I have no issue with that. I just... <laughs> so they went and had fun with it. Okay, first off, the People's Joker looks bad. Don't get me wrong. But, like, because I went and looked at the trailer. But, like, to get that angry over a film that you will never see. Yeah. Especially. That's called the internet. Yeah. <laughs> especially, though, like, as a satire saying, oh, if you're going to do this yeah. from a and like, it's a satire. Was it, they're, they're not trying to make an accurate comic book adaptation of. In the preview, was it, like, the key line? Oh, hey, Mark. No. It's a deep cut. <laughs> Not that deep. So, in the... I don't know. The, the whole thing looked bad. I, I don't even know how to describe it. But good for them for making it. But, you know, when you make something that ha- you don't have the copyright on, probably sure. not going to be seen. I mean, obviously, they're going to try to do it as a satire, right? Yeah, you got parody rights. Yeah, so, obviously not. Um, it doesn't got- mean that... Now it'll just go to court, and then it will win in court, because parody almost always wins in court. If you have the money for it. So you could do, I don't know, like a parody of, I don't know, like, Megan. And that would I'm be, Megan? That would be okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. It would be like trying to film a film, or trying to film a movie in Disney, Disney World, without them knowing it, and it being black and white, and, you know, kind of, Doug, do you know about that film? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. What's it called? I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, they felt these filmmakers filmed a whole film. Never to be seen again. Yeah, in Disney World. The, you can watch. You can watch it. No, I mean the filmmakers have probably never been seen. Oh again. yeah, <laughs> Disney. Disney found out that they filmed it on site, and they're like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and they they went. Uh, well, they got of, away with it. Neener neener. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tiny tiny world. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so anyway, these brookie Oreos of pretty damn good. We got brookie Oreo. Have we never had these? No, we, we have. had them before. Oh, okay. I mean, but that doesn't mean we can't talk about them again. Uh-huh. We're recycling flavors at this point because that's that's Oreo, all, get on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll go to a grocery store. Okay, I'll see what see mm-hmm. if there's something. It's like no, no, I know they've done that, done that, done oh, that, yeah. done that, done that. We have done, I think, every Oreo flavor that's been out in the last four years. Started with the Swedish Fish that you brought in. Yeah. Anything that's come out since Swedish Fish, yes. Yeah. We have done. There's some of those pre-Swedish fish flavors that I'm like, oh, I didn't try that. Now I want that. Bring that one back out. I will say the Swiss cake roll Swiss ice cake. cream. Oh, Swiss cake roll. That we had, I had a couple weeks ago. Pretty darn good. I uh, pretty much tasted like Swiss cake roll. It was really good. Um, so much better than that chocolate Twinkie I had earlier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jeff, real quick, let's do box office news here. Ba-dum, ba-dum, bum, bum. Uh, number one for <coughs> September 16th through the 18th, The Woman King made $19 million in its opening weekend on a $50 million budget. People are complaining now that it's taking an artistic license to the history of this. Oh, no. <laughs> like, a Every fictional movie. film has artistic <laughs> license. Braveheart did it. <laughs> That's a true story, man. Based on true stories. Based. There once was a man named. (laughs) 
Uh, number two, Barbarian made six point three million, a total of twenty one million on a ten point five million dollar budget. Pearl came in at number three, making three point one million in its opening weekend on a one million dollar budget. Well, that tripled its investment. This thing. was the prequel to X, which came out last year, the horror movie, mm-hmm. and. I think it's the one is X the one that they were trying to make a porn and then the oh yeah 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 the serial killer was there or whatever yeah they they secretly shot this back to back that's why it only cost a million to make so they did two films at once cool. that's smart yeah <laughs> so they lied to their producers their their producers are happy let's just say. <laughs> I'm sure someone on the internet's mad about that <laughs> uh, let's find I can't out. believe that they just didn't make a new movie they just used old recycled film. <laughs> Uh, number four, see how they run. Also made three point one million in its opening weekend on a oh, no, questionable budget. number of dollar <laughs> budget. <sighs> Excuse me. And number five, Bullet Train, still pulling in the bucks. Two point five million, a total of eighty six point four on an eighty million dollar budget. First time Top Gun is not in the top five. I was gonna ask. Yep. Ran away. I think it was six actually. <laughs> it was six. Yep. Uh, what do you got coming out? Upcoming September 23rd, we've got The Railway Children Return. Follow a group of children who are evacuated to a Yorkshire village during the Second World War, where they encounter a young soldier who, like them, is far away from home. Isn't this based off, like, children's books or something, or am I thinking of something else? That's a boxcar children. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Stars John Bradley. Ooh. Oh, hey. Mm -hmm. Although he did that one stupid movie about... The moon. Uh, Moonfall? Yes. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Also coming out, we've got, I don't know if I've ever heard this one before, Avatar is being re-released? I believe they (sighs) filmed their, like, two movies back-to-back, too. They got four movies coming out. I think they're probably, there were only a million dollars each, probably, I would think. I can't wait till this film bombs. Yeah. It's already made $3 billion. No, not this one. (laughs) So uh, when the uh, Fox executive sent uh, some notes to uh, James Cameron about uh, changing up some stuff, what was his uh, comment? What? His comment was... <laughs> like, I made Titanic. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Yeah. They were in a brand new um, building on the studio lot that costs like almost a billion dollars mm-hmm. for them to build in this for this event. And basically he said, I made Titanic and that's what paid for this building. <laughs> Which you can't go wrong like he did. I still hope it bombs. Oh, I do too. What else you got, Jeff? And we also have Don't Worry, Darling. I won't. A 1950s housewife living with her husband in a utopian experimental community begins to worry that his glamorous company could be hiding disturbing secrets. It all changes when Harry Styles spits on someone. Allegedly. Mm. Allegedly. Florence Pugh, Olivia Wilde, Chris Pine, Harry Styles, Gemma Chan, Sidney Chandler. That's yeah. a lot of names. Ernie mm. Hudson. Nick Kroll. Well, you, got, you didn't finish that executive's quote when he responded back to him. And to said, James Cameron? To James Cameron said, so you're at net zero. <laughs> <laughs> We're even. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, I forgot to do a top five this week, I'll be honest. Good, good. I didn't do one either. Okay. Do we, do, we, do we have a boardroom? You know what? Let's just do a boardroom. Let's just finish up with a boardroom. How about that? I, top five things not to do at a comic... No, for attending. For I attending. Have... Top five things to do attending a convention. Can I just give my number one? Yeah, go ahead. This is mine was specifically for the Cincinnati Comic Expo. Number <laughs> one, everybody there, when you get there, hug Jason. No. He is hug a hugger. Jason. Nope. Hug him. Nope. That was my number one too. Yes, uh, that's that. No. That makes his. No. That makes his year basically. If you say, "Hey, great job," or "Hey, love your podcast," that's much better. Yes, like that and one. then you give and him then a give hug. Give a big hug. Yes, and kiss on the cheek. Oh. <laughs> I have a stick. That I didn't make here. it top five because I don't know what to do at a comic expo. <laughs> that's a good call. I've never been there. Yeah. Brian, you got a couple you, options. You've been to gaming conventions. Oh, I know what to do there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Brian? Guy? Uh, don't ask stupid questions. 
Okay. Oh, that's a good one. That's my number one too. Or, yeah, when when you're when there's a line of fifty people to ask the celebrity, mm-hmm. and the host, aka Jason, says, "Yes, please keep your uh, questions to one. Don't say I have one question, <laughs> ten parts. You're on a desert island." <laughs> And also, don't tell us that you wrote fan fiction to the guy. Uh, excuse me, I wrote some Star Trek fan fiction. No, he doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to hear it. Good for you. Don't do it. Also, uh, do not tell a celebrity that you wanted to be their dad. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they're female. Yes. It's a little... Please be um, respectful. We do have security, so please be respectful. Yes. But it's going to be a blast. So That's right. I'll be wearing the fake earpiece. That's right. And I'll be walking down the line going, this guy, this guy, this guy. <laughs> the guy in the shirt? Okay. I'm looking for him. So we got boardroom. We have three teams this week. Yes. No, no. I'm, I'm going to set this one out. Oh, no. Doug, you're, you're my what? partner, Doug. What? I wasn't prepared for this. Jim and me. You, you don't have to be Brian prepared. and Blake. You don't know what you're doing at all. <laughs> the cards tell you what to do. Okay. I enjoyed watch, listening to this. I didn't want to be a part of so it. So this is uh, Jim and I are here. Do you want to do plot or character? You want character or plot? I'll take character. That's fine. Uh, I don't care. Blake's in here. He's on it. Uh, so basically, do I look at it? I... Yeah, you read those three cards. Oh, the, oh okay. And decide I'll which one you want to do. I'll read my three cards, and we combine them together without knowing what the other one. Picked. Okay. I just thought you guys so, took one at random. No, as Jeff said. No. Uh, Jim describes the character in this film. I describe the plot, and then somebody gives us notes. Uh, we're only going to do a minute. A minute and ten seconds. We'll do a minute and ten seconds here. Um, Should I turn on my Amber Alert alarm <laughs> so you know when time is up? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay. Good. We'll be playing this game on the stage as well. Picked out. So who gives I'm notes? Uh, is this okay. all the notes we have? Okay. Uh, two, we, each person... Uh, each person gives a note, so we'll get four notes per no, no. movie. Or uh, each group can give one note. Okay, each each yep. other team gives the note. Yes. So we're going to do a minute and seventeen seconds. So who's going first? Basically, we'll go first over here. Right. We'll go in order. So basically, Jim and I. Jim has a character card. I have a plot card. We don't know which the other one is. We flip it over. We say it. We try to make a film, and then the note. The other teams are the executives, and they release a note, and we have to incorporate that into our film. So, do you guys have a good note one over there? Are you guys ready? I've got six good notes. Well, you and Blake have to decide which one you want to play on us. So, it's very bizarre. I don't really have good notes. If you've got any good notes, I, mean, I got one I can use. But if you've got one, we'll look at one. Un- un- unless their plot calls out for one reason. All right, we'll, we'll use your note. Un- unless the plot isn't calling for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you guys ready? Is everybody ready for the notes? We have timers set? Yep, I got man 17 seconds. Okay, ready, Jim? You do the character, I got the plot. Yep. Okay, you ready? Yes. And go. A shark with a human brain goes on the run in New Zealand bush country. <laughs> oh, I want to hear this. <laughs> so, this shark, J- Jim, uh, he, he has a human brain uh, because he made it with a woman, and they have an offspring, a shark and a woman, and it has a human brain, and because of Sharknado, it gets thrown into New Zealand's bush country. And then he is actually trying to chase down the uh, guy who killed some of his species. Yes. Going to the sharks when he was on his boat in the... Uh, it, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, we got a note I, here. I, I, I have a, uh, what if the main character... Uh-huh. Shark was, Man. ...was the king of burgers? We have a deal with Burger King. Well, that is a good call. So, basically, in bush country, the only thing in New Zealand bush country is Burger Kings. That's all they have. So he basically starts go, uh, robbing these Burger Kings because he gets so hungry. He's a shark with a human brain. He, he has to eat a lot during the day. So he starts robbing these Burger Kings, not because of anger, but because of necessity. And then the police go after him. Uh, we've got a note. Yeah. What if all the characters worked in the circus? <laughs> well, again, he is a shark <laughs> with a human brain. So obviously he's worked in the circus. I mean, mm-hmm. he's, he's on the freak show. Yeah. Uh, so basically, then he uh, he has the circus side of it, and then the police side. So he's hiding with the circus. Uh, that's how he's kind of staying low in the bush country of New Zealand. And Burger King sponsors the circus. Yes. Um, and the title of this movie? Uh, Shark King. Shark King? No? What do you got? King Shark? 
King Shark. I like King Shark. Uh, stars There's Mike. probably some sort of intellectual uh, property. <laughs> no, no, no. We're fine. If it works for the a, It's a parody. Favorite. It's a parody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. satire. Uh, who does it star? I was thinking it was Shark King, as you said first. <laughs> What'd you say? Shark King. Shark King. Shark? Shark. Okay, fine. Shark King. Starring Jason Momoa. All right. Uh, okay, so that's our first one. Shark King. <laughs> uh, what do you got? All right, so what do I have to read first? Do we read the plot first, then character. the character card, character or read first. the character card? What note are we doing? All right. We'll pull it out. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, Je- Jeff? You guys ready? Uh, are they going? Or yeah, 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 they oh. are. Oh, yeah. You yeah. guys ready? We're ready. Right, yeah. Here we go. And ready. Brian, you have the character card? I have the plot card. Okay, Blake, you go first. I'll go. I'll start with the character. The best hacker in the world <laughs> tries to take down the top flute player in the band. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. So he's in the New York Classic Symphony. He's a flute player, but it's a special kind of flute because it's actually an electronic flute, and it's the first kind of this in the series in the world, and a hacker decides he's going to... He has a vendetta against this flute player, the first electronic computerized flute player in the world, and so he's going to try and hack him and try and ruin his debut performance in the New York Symphony. Hold on, hold on. I like the idea. My uh, executive over here has an idea. Well, let's set the whole story in a hot tub. Fuck New York. We're going hot tub, <laughs> Los Angeles. <laughs> Not only is it a flute, it's a skin flute. It's an electronic skin flute. And the best hacker in the world is jealous that his girlfriend likes it the best because he find out he had, a, had a, an affair with him. And so while he's sitting in the hot tub. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. wait. I'm loving this so far, but crazy idea. What if the whole cast was a bunch of talking house pets? <laughs> Which is even better. They're all goldfish. That makes it even more incredible. So it's but an they, animated film. Don't they burn up in the hot tub, the goldfish? And the flute is actually an eel. It's at least 12 inches. Uh, it's an electric eel. It's an electric eel flute. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> What's the title? I need a title. <laughs> Flutie. <laughs> Blowing Nemo. <laughs> Blowing Nemo? <laughs> oh, wow. You guys win already. <laughs> uh, who does it star? <laughs> Come on, Brian. It's voiced by Don Cheadle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo! Blake, Blake, email, Blake huh? very impressive. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I didn't even have to. I mean, we gotta follow that one up. I, say, I hope you're that good. I got nothing. Oh boy, I'm new at this. Yeah, we might be in trouble. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is my own, only my third week of this, and <laughs> you see how much I contributed. <laughs> who's doing the character and who's doing the plot? I've got the character. Okay, do you have one here, Tim? Which one? Uh, okay. Or. You guys got the it no might change trend? based on the, the gr- how great this movie is. Okay. Because I think we're going to kick some butt. Man, I like all my choices, too. This is tough. Let's see how it goes here. Yes. Okay, you ready? Jeff, you got the character? I, I've got the character. Go. A misunderstood old man. <laughs> Goes for the gold and Olympic figure skating. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, uh, Clarence here has his whole life been wanting to, you know, like the the, the fame and, and the 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 acknowledgement uh, of winning a gold medal. And he's tried a bunch of sports. And by the time he gets to be eighty years old, he finally masters mm-hmm. figure skating. Uh, so, I I like that idea. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. But. What if this whole story was set in an escape room? Go. <laughs> so, to get to the Olympics, the, the uh, you know Clarence, the, yeah, yeah, Clarence, like the the uh, evil Soviet bloc teams uh-huh. are trying to prevent him from getting to the Olympics. So they have him locked up, and he has to solve the puzzles to get out so he can like skate for the gold. Um. Uh huh. Do you got any other news over there, <laughs> Doug? <anything>? No. no. <laughs> All right. I, th- that sounds amazing. <laughs> but one note I have is: what if the main character okay. could talk to animals, but he has to keep it a secret? Works perfectly. That's how he gets out of the escape room. 
you know, they don't, the other, uh, the, the captors don't realize that he has this ability, but talking to animals, getting the animals to do his stuff and to get information he's from them. He's not kidnapped. That, it's an <laughs> escape room. Um, he's kidnapped. Have you seen the escape room scary movies? Oh. Yes. So he has to get out, but, to, you know, because Olympic fame and gold is on the line. When he gets out, his partner, it's Paris figure skating, is a gorilla. Oh! <laughs> and the title. Escape for Gold. <laughs> Starring? <laughs> I was going to say Don Cheadle. Hume Cronin. <laughs> Isn't he dead? <laughs> <laughs> Mordecai Three Finger Brown. <laughs> well, so there's your films. So uh, we've got uh, Shart King uh-huh. starring Jason Momoa. Uh-huh. <laughs> we've got the animated feature Blowing Nemo, mm-hmm. voiced by Don Cheadle. Mm-hmm. And we have Escape for Gold featuring... <laughs> featuring who? Who's the star of this movie? Hume Cronin. Hume Cronin. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so take your picks. Uh, vote at Bad Ideas Podcast. Yeah. Let us know who wins. Well, you got to put up the poll. That's well, poll. you can too. I cannot. I don't have access well, to, the, tag to the Twitter account. You anymore. can tag us. You could just give me access to the Twitter account. I don't know the password. Anymore. Great. <laughs> I think I know the password. Okay. Is it password? No. The password is password. <laughs> Anyways, so there's your picks. There's your top five this week. <laughs> here's uh, my here's my number one yeah. for attending a convention. Yes. Come and have fun. That's right. Yes. yes. My number five is don't be that guy. Yeah. You, we all know who he is. Don't be that guy. And, and another one. Uh, their dad put something up, but if you see uh, little girls as Raven and Little Red Riding Hood asked to take their picture, he, he put something up saying he's going to be Leatherface, I believe. And they came last year, and they had the biggest kick when people wanted a, their picture taken. So if you see these two girls out there, Ask them to th- take their picture. They're like seven and five or something Some, like that. Something yeah. like that, yeah. Well, another... Like, I'm assuming it's Raven, the uh, DC. Yes, uh, no, yes. from That's So Raven. Yes. No. Oh, I'm I was hoping. Kidding. I was thinking it might have been the wrestler. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, I just thought it was the Baltimore Ravens mascot. <laughs> He's on IR. <laughs> I never thought Raven, the wrestler. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> the other piece of advice, when you're in one of the booths to yes. buy stuff and the kid really wants that llama, be a good person and buy it and keep it so the kid can't keep bothering his mom or dad for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the kid was bothering his dad and his dad was saying no, so I decided I'll buy it so it won't tempt him to get it anymore. <laughs> Scab Jeff will be there Friday, just to let you guys know. Uh, so get your llamas early. <laughs> Before he does. Um, bad idea of the week, number 27, Don't co- not coming to the Comic Expo and seeing us. Bad idea. Bad idea. Bad, 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 bad idea. Bad. Uh, we do want to say, hey, we appreciate um, doing the panels and being charged the second floor up there. Uh, we appreciate everything from Comic Expo. We're looking forward to it. Uh, one, it's one of my favorite weekends of the whole year, uh, just because it's, it's fun to work with everybody, especially you guys, just all, all year long, you know. We bullshit on the podcast, but it's fun to be, like, out there and doing this. Uh, and, um, you know, it's just kind of, en- it's really enjoyable. So, um, but anyways, so come to Cincinnati Comic Expo September 23rd through the 25th. And it's meet the co-Canadians of the year. That's right. Ask for Doug and Dr. Dana's autograph. Uh, and Roger says goodbye. How about titles for the show? Titles for the show. That's Addendum. Addendum. I got, oh, fuck sadness. <laughs> Don't think we can do that. I've got, uh, I ruined so much felt (laughs) Uh, from what nightmares are made. (laughs) I taste the floor. (laughs) It will never not blow my mind. Colon gummies. And please don't steal our cubs. Uh, I got, it's ungood. Screams in my mouth. Uh, A gateway game. And I think that's it. I have featuring Scab Gimp. Jason can f himself. We didn't Ooh. say that. I just wanted to. I just wanted to put it in there. <laughs> Thank you. I'd probably watch that. Uh-huh. And Blake is big in Japan. I do like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, uh, I have little shit on the ground at the beach. <laughs> yeah. Uh, deathy situations. And karate-related crimes, because that's tough to say. Yes, it is. It was. Let's see. I had This is a Nightmare, 
Suicide by Lion, <laughs> The Jason Street of D and D, One Eyed Pigeon. <laughs> I feel like the One Eyed Pigeon. I think that was it. No, no. Uh, you're a rare genetic mutation. <laughs> you are a rare. Yeah. And you're a horrible character. <laughs> uh, I like that Blake is big in Japan. Blake is big in Japan. Okay. Ch- change accept it? Change approved. There you go. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Walking dead to talking heads from comic books to TV sets. There's a history. Not so bad. There's a history. It's the history of bad, so bad. The history of bad, it's bad. The history of bad ideas. Oh, yes. You are listening to a hobie.